Okay, I'm going to start out this series of videos by first installing Dragon OS. Uh, this is the public version that I released. It's based on Debian Buster. Uh, has quite a few tools built into it for uh, use with software-defined radios or vice versa. Um, I'm going to show install it in VirtualBox, although you probably would just want to go ahead and install it on a real machine. The uh, caveat is you need to have something with the uh, ability to boot with a leg legacy BIOS. So this is just a quick run through of VirtualBox. Go ahead and give it a name. We'll take it to Debian 64-bit. You can put RAM wherever you want. I'm just doing two gigs. Giving it a virtual Hard disk, 20 something's more than enough for right now. You go ahead, you hit settings, come up to storage. You can hit on your controller IDE, uh, click where it says empty, click the little disk. And you'll choose the disk file that you downloaded from SourceForge there. Open that and we'll hit start. and make sure you have the ISO selected. Should get this screen here. You can go ahead, click enter on live. Now you don't need a network connection uh, to install this. You're basically installing what I already put together. You get this little prompt about saving history. I'm not concerned about that right now. Now you could run it live right now, like I said. Uh, you're probably going to not get a uh, good performance on any of the software-defined radios that you have plugged in USB. So if you're going to do it in virtual box or whatever software you're using to virtualize, um, I recommend at least installing it. You can come down to your system tools. We want to pull open the terminal. We'll do this command here, sudo respin installer GUI. Hit enter. It's going to prompt you to continue. Yes. Well, would you like to install a different local? I just go ahead and hit no. Now it's down off the screen here, you can't see it. It's saying like hit OK or cancel. You can just hit enter. This is going to start up the uh, G parted. And we want to just pick our first drive that it sees here, that 20 something gig virtual, virtual drive I made. You come up here, it's probably going to look like this when you first do it. You can come up here create a partition table, you can just leave it the default, hit apply, uh, right click on that unallocated, hit new, I'm going to save some uh, some space, you can see where the free space remaining number is going up. Uh, you can look online for guides as to how much free space uh, you need for swap, but uh, I'll put it at about 4 gigs or so, close enough. Uh, you can leave Everything else as is, hit add, come down here, right click on the unallocated. Now you can do this several different ways. I just come down here, I put it as an extended partition and then right click again on the unallocated and come down and change it to Linux swap. So you should have something that looks like this. I hit the apply all, op all operations button, hit apply, it'll format drive, create the partitions and finish. It should come out looking like this. You can exit out of that. The installer will continue. It's asking you where do you want to swap partition. You can go ahead and put it as SDA5. Where do you want the root system? SDA1. Put it as EXT4. Put it in root. 
for where the home's going to be installed. You come down here, give your uh, root user a password, create a new user name, and this is what you would use to log in after you install it. Now, what you should be picking is this SDA master boot record of disk. I've noticed a couple times uh, that might be missing. If that's the case, you probably just want to go ahead, exit the installer, come back through, go back, reformat the, uh, you can delete the partitions you made it in, in gparted and, and do that part again. Um, but the important thing is here you see this SDA master boot record of disk. Uh, you can set your time zone. And it's going to just ask you to verify. Do you want to continue? Yes. So now it's going to go through, format everything. When the installer finishes, it'll prompt you to uh, reboot, basically. It'll ask you to remove the install media. You can do that through VirtualBox. And then what you should get is the system rebooting into the actual installed version. Um, you'll be prompted for the login. So in future videos, the goal would be to go through and show the use of all the various software that's installed in here. There you go. So should finish. It'll ask if you want to reboot to try it out. We'll say yes. Now, I didn't uh, remove the DVD or the ISO uh, fast enough, so that's why this is coming back up. But if I go ahead and arrow down here to boot to the first hard drive, which you won't see this after you've removed the installer media, it will just boot like it should. Um, it will basically go right to this screen here. And now you can use your recommend just logging in as the normal user you created. And now we're running with it installed. Uh, if you do need to elevate to root, uh, just want to make sure I touch on this. I've found that to do the su space dash is what you need to do. If you leave that dash off, a lot of the commands aren't recognized. The bash and shell is not set up properly, so um, just remember that. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you.